Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hard for Games channel. I'm your host, Tony, and big thank you to developer Jeff for sending over a Game Boy player testing station known as the GBS. It is a giant, bulky unit full of a variety of components, and unfortunately, not much is known about it. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only one, at least that I know of, that exists. Now, recently, some documentation about the GameCube was leaked online, and it did mention the GBS, but it did not say much. It didn't say what it was supposed to be used for. So today we're going to go ahead and explore and see what we can get it to do. All right, so here we have the Game Boy Player Testing Station. As you can see, it's a very strange looking device. It has an embedded Japanese GameCube, a butt of a GameCube upside down sticking up, arcade style buttons on the side, and a bunch of components inside the box as well. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, the previous owner was developer Jeff. He actually recently sold it and is going from me to a new owner. Thank you for letting me tinker with it in the interim. Uh, but while he had it in his possession, unfortunately, uh, he couldn't get it up and running. There's just not much known about these devices and it's really kind of a trial and error thing, unfortunately. But today we're gonna go ahead and take a tour of the exterior, the interior, and then see if we can boot it up. See if there are any tests that we can run on this thing. All right, so let's go ahead and check this thing out. Like I mentioned, we have a Japanese GameCube here that's embedded into the box and then this sort of piece of a bottom of a GameCube. But if we open this up and actually you would unscrew some screws here and there's some hinges on the side, you can see the remaining bit of the GameCube and of course how everything connects in here. Now, obviously, since your GameCube is on a bracket and the bottom is covered up, you can't plug in a Game Boy Player on this thing. So that's why you have this. You can plug in your Game Boy Player upside down on this bottom up piece of a GameCube. Inside here, there are a number of different interesting things. Obviously, we have all of the connections between these different parts. We have the power. We have the wiring and the mechanisms for the arcade style buttons. But... We also have this AGB or Game Boy Advance testing cartridge. There is a Game Boy Advance uh, adapter cable and a little hidden cartridge in here that is a Game Boy Advance flash cartridge. It says AGB flash cartridge. SW3 is the right protect switch. Switch it off only while writing. Otherwise, leave it on the on position. To prevent damage to the switch's slider mechanism, use tweezers to switch it. Big thank you to William from our Patreon for doing the translation there. In addition to those two cartridges, it also came with this one, which says CGB, which of course is Game Boy Color or Color Game Boy. Now I did end up dumping all of these cartridges and here's what we found. So the flash cartridge that is inside the system has a checker program, basically aging software, diagnostic type stuff. It's actually pretty cool and this is what it looks like when it runs. Now the Game Boy Color or CGB cartridge, if you just boot it up on a regular system, it just goes into slave mode and then nothing else happens. However, if you take a look at the dump in a hex editor, you can kind of see some of the prompts and commands that would presumably help you run tests with this thing. Not entirely sure, but it is certainly interesting to look at. Now the AGB cart just led to a bunch of junk data. And when you actually open this thing up, you can see that it, it it's functionally just a pass-through card, so there is no data saved on the ribboned Game Boy Advance cartridge. So anyways, moving on here, we have our two arcade style buttons. We have a green one that says start, a red one, and our power switch on the side. It says AC 100 volts only. That is the Japanese standard here in the USA. We have 120 volts, so I will be utilizing a step-down converter for this thing because I don't want to make it explode. And on the back here, we have a little plaque that's screwed in. It says, test machine for complete products, GBS Nintendo. A couple other things of note here. We have a memory card, which I did dump. It just has a one-piece game save file, nothing really related to this. I think it was just packaged in. And we also have a memory card that's on a 
cord, and you can actually, if you open this up, see where it's connected in. In addition to seeing where this guy is connected in. This is a Japanese GameCube, so I have my uh, Japanese Game Boy Player disc. However, I don't have a Japanese Game Boy Player, but I'm hoping that since the Game Boy is not region locked, that this hardware will be okay and it will recognize it. I'm assuming that it will, but considering I'm filming and I'm testing, everything will likely go wrong and it likely will not work. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what happens. So you'd put this in here. There we go. Put this guy in here. And I just realized something too. I always found it weird that Game Boy Player had the cartridges upside down, but in this, they're right side up. Kind of neat. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. Game Boy Player not connected. Turn off the power of the main body. Please connect the Game Boy Player. Let's try this again. Darn. So, my best guess is that this needs to be a Japanese Game Boy player, so I'm gonna order one of these off eBay and we'll see you all in a couple weeks, or a couple seconds. So as I waited for my new Game Boy player to arrive, I began thinking more and more about this. Why the hell would a Japanese Game Boy player even work? The problem is, is that the only thing connecting the GameCube to the Game Boy player that's upside down is a memory card on a cord. That's literally the only thing going to the board inside. And how would a GameCube know to make that connection in that manner? It's got to be a software thing, but alas, I held out a little bit of hope that it would work. Motherfucker. So at this point, I figured to myself, I need to rule out every little bit of hardware issue that there might possibly be, even though I think it's probably software. There needs to be some piece of software that will allow the GameCube to make the handshake with the board, and then therefore the upside down GameCube and Game Boy Player. So basically, I looked to Twitter, I talked to Jeff, and a number of other individuals that I generally work with when it comes to GameCube hardware stuff. Unfortunately, any combination of mixing and matching the cartridges and systems did not work. And some of the suggestions got a little bit wild. I even thought that maybe if I tried to incorporate my other GameCube into the mix, maybe that would work. Or what if I use my American GameCube with my Game Boy Player, but connect this into here, bypassing this, and then connect this into there, and this into there, or this into there, and this into there. So at the end of the day, it can't be a hardware issue, unless, unless I'm missing something here. I don't think I'm missing anything. You know, all the connections are secured tight, the mm. interior of the unit is in pristine condition, it's gotta be that handshake, right? I mean, it's gotta be some sort of software that we're missing. So another idea we had was to try to get a hold of some aging software, which functionally is like diagnostic uh, testing for the software. Maybe that could allow us to try to make the connection. Not quite sure, but I found an ISO of a GameCube service disk that I was trying to get booted off of these SD cards. I figured if I could get it running, maybe we could try to also get it running on this and or connect this GameCube to this unit via this memory card. But alas, Swiss, which is the program I normally utilize to uh, run GameCube games off of these SD cards, didn't really seem to like the service disk program and it would not run and thus another dead end. Now we were also able to come across another bit of aging software, but unfortunately Swiss had the same issue. This program is just not meant to boot this type of software off of an SD card. So at this point, I kind of hit my last strides. My last resort was just maybe if I remove the box entirely and just take some of the components, I can get them to work together. But alas, nothing happened, which really made us all think, what was this box even meant to do to begin with? So, do I abandon my wife and my children and spend the rest of my days desperately trying to get the GBS to function? I think, I think we've 
hit the end of the road, unfortunately. You know, it was funny because during this time, we actually found another GBS, you know, Game Boy Player Station owner. And I was surprised that anyone knew even what it was, much less being able to find one other individual that owned one. And that person had every component that we had, but still could not get it up and running, which really makes me think there's gotta be some sort of software that needs to be run on this thing to make it do that handshake between the GameCube and the board because connecting to a Game Boy Player via a memory card is just not a natural thing for a GameCube to want to do. It's, it's strange. It's also a little bit funny because in the GameCube documentation, it says that the write speed for the memory cards is like 64 kilobytes a second, which is pretty slow. But it also says the read speed is a lot faster, but it doesn't say how fast. And that would kind of dictate what sort of information was being sent back to the GameCube. Like originally I thought, okay, yeah, you'd play games and test them on the Game Boy Player, it'd go to the GameCube and then video out. But was it video that was being sent back to the GameCube? Like what exactly, what sort of information was being sent to it? What sort of testing were you even supposed to be doing with this thing? It, it really, as I dove into it further, kind of boggled my mind more and more. I'm just not, Sure. As I mentioned at the beginning, some of the recent SDK documents for the GameCube like mention the, the GBS, but don't really say much about it. It's a very obscure and heavy item. So I hate to leave like this with it being kind of in a like a non-functional state, but you know, preservation isn't necessarily all about everything at once. You know, sometimes preservation is letting the world know that something exists and taking some photos and getting as much information out there and then kind of taking it step by step by step after that point. So hopefully the new owner will be able to get it up and running and tell us more about it in the future, fingers crossed. So aside from that, I do appreciate all of you watching. Thank you again, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Uh -huh.